Hey guys, how you doing? Um, unless you live under a rock in the jiu-jitsu world, you're probably aware that um, Hicks and Gracie has um, announced a while ago that he has um, Parkinson's disease, and it's it's really sad to see it. Um, when I'm when I'm out running and stuff in the mornings, I frequently listen to his his books, Breathe, and recently uh, Comfort in Darkness, and um, he's a very, very interesting guy. I met him in Rio in 2003, I believe, 2003, 2004. And like many of the guys in the Gracie family, um, uh, I would kind of just, I guess, randomly meet them at the academy. And I guess uh, because you don't have a lot of time to, to get to know them and stuff like that, I would kind of my, my kind of test to see, you know, what they were like as a person was to kind of pretend that I didn't know who they were. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of the time I'd meet them socially first, like out of the gear and stuff like that. Um, and so I was at um, my friend Bruno's house. He's a very good friend of Hickson. And he told me that Hickson was coming around. He was going to have a shower, look after him and stuff like this. So I, kind of, I pretended that I didn't know who Hickson was. I put on this whole false sense of bravado and stuff like this. And um, and and uh, Hickson was cool, man. Like, he really, he, he didn't assume that I knew who he was. He didn't say, I'm Hickson Gracie, this jiu-jitsu guy, none of that stuff. He was super cool. Um, he let me put on this false rant. He didn't know it was false. I was just being, this, being a dick. And, you know, I'm from Australia. I'm going to beat all the Brazilians. Hey, you should do jiu-jitsu and all this sort of stuff, right? And, and he was like, I do a little bit of jiu-jitsu. And I'm like, oh, cool. Like, I okay, go, we probably can't train together because you're probably a beginner. He was cool, yeah? It told me a lot about the guy. He was really, really cool, relaxed and all this. And then when Bruno came into the room, it was very funny when I revealed, or Hickson realized that the whole thing was a joke. I thought it was very funny. Anyway, so we spent the day at the beach and um, talked about a lot of stuff and yeah, it's, it was hard watching him go through his stuff with his hip and his back because I was going through stuff with my hip and back. It's kind of emotional. Anyway, so when I was going through all of that stuff and then I was seeing and hearing about him going through the same thing, I was trying to reach out to him through Bruno and, you know. So then Hickson has, a, has an operation, does a lot of physical therapy and gets back on the mat and he's moving again. And it was amazing to see because I too had returned to the mat. I wasn't moving that great, you know, my back's still stuffed and knees are weird and stuff like that. But it was amazing to see him, you know, because he was doing seminars when he was wrecked. He had to put his hands on his knees to hold himself up. It was horrible seeing it. I could feel his pain because I knew exactly what it felt like. And it was horrible. So seeing him get back to health again and moving and smiling and, ha I mean, he was always happy and stuff like that. But like there was this, this renewed vigor and enthusiasm for life that I thought was amazing. And and I guess he had a couple of years, a year or something like that, and then blam, out of nowhere, Parkinson's. And I'm like, oh, guy can't get a break, right? And, and but like, it's amazing listening to his story about him telling, him talking about um, how he deals with it and his attitude towards it and stuff like that. And I, I, you know, of, co of course I'm going to say you've got to listen to Breathe, listen to Comfort and Darkness. I prefer listening to them than reading. Uh, go out running and walking in the forest and it's just like, I don't know, a chance to kind of take it all in without other distractions and stuff like that. And, and I think the voice, it's not Hickson doing it, but immediately you just kind of assume that's his voice and you picture Hickson talking to you and stuff. But it's... Um, it's inspiring because, I mean, we all have challenges, you know, um, and, you know, life's not easy. So it's really interesting um, hearing him deal with such a, a serious issue, you know, like facing the end of his life and, 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 and all the complexities that go with Parkinson's and, and all that sort of stuff and how he's decided to, to attack this and, and, and face it head on and, and you know, it, it just reminds me that, you know, we kind of, we all have a choice as to, you know, we don't maybe choose how we die. Well, 
science would say that we do that we do choose our death if you drink a lot you're probably going to die from liver cancer if you smoke a lot you're probably going to die from lung cancer if you drive like an idiot you're probably going to die in a car crash and stats support that that we pretty much do choose our own death but we also get to choose how we live and you know life for me is in turmoil at the moment a little bit there's a lot going on academy's looking at moving there's a there's a bunch of pressure and stress and stuff like this and and so hearing these words of wisdom from somebody up the food chain a long way up the food chain for me is very inspiring and gives you confidence that that you know we we feel we feel our path and we feel the right way to go and it's like well is that the right way to go We're trying to intellectualize it it's always a battle between your head and your heart like my heart says like this is the direction i should go and this is where i should pursue things and then your head's like are you sure like that's you know maybe that's not the most financially viable option maybe it doesn't make as much sense strategically you know and then you've got you've got different options but i think one of the most powerful things that i've i've, I've listened to in the last couple of weeks is that to not dismiss anything, you know? And I guess my, my father said that too. He said that mostly about martial arts. It's like, don't close your eyes to anything. Be open to everything. Every martial art has something. A lot of them are like too too tightly knit, but he goes, there's always something in, in each art. So that's one of the reasons why I've done so many different martial arts is that I would do literally eight hours a day Aikido for, year, for a couple of years and I would I'd grab the essence of that art and I'm like, okay, so like a lot of some of this stuff is bollocks, but like this this key principle here is that's really worthwhile. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to and foster that and then I'd go do judo or karate or Thai boxing or kickboxing or boxing or you know, whatever it happened to be and 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 like one of the things I learned in boxing for example is I love the progression there. Yeah. From like just standing there throwing your hands around in the air and doing movement drills without touching anything to, to then hitting a heavy bag, to then hitting focus mitts, to then hitting focus mitts while the person's throwing punches and, and stuff at you. And then eventually, eventually moving on to soft sparring and then on onto heavier sparring and then fighting. And there's a lot of progression there. Whereas I think like in Jiu Jitsu, there's a lot of like drill fight, you know, and I think that's where a lot of injuries happen and where a lot of students feel very despondent about their ability so I like to try and provide a lot of progression in our classes so that it's not just drill fight yeah so anyway my advice go out and listen to these these two books I, I listen to them you know regularly and get something different out of them all the time I listen to a lot of different stuff but today listening to um, to his struggles is yeah it's difficult it's not easy. Yeah. Anyway, getting all emotional again. And I barely know the guy, but, but, you know, he wouldn't know who I am from a bar of soap probably, but that's not the point. Um, it's just hearing about somebody's struggles and we all have very similar struggles. Human beings are far more similar than we are different. And so what he's going through, a lot of people are going to go through and have gone through. You know, and you know, it's it's looking at, at at my mentors who are, you know, only like fifteen years ahead of me age wise, and what they're going through, and the struggles they have with their bodies and stuff like this. Um, I'm trying to pass on the lessons I'll, I I learn and have learnt from them to my students. You know, about like don't destroy yourself on the mat, like don't don't make your jiu-jitsu practice like a an athletic contest you know which which you know it's fun wrestling and stuff like that but a lot of the modern jiu-jitsu game that relies heavily heavily on like excessive flexibility and excessive fitness everyone's taking performance enhancing drugs and like lifting massive weights and going crazy and things like that well i've, I've well i haven't <laughs> i haven't done the drug thing but i've trained super hard in that way in the past you know and and it doesn't, it doesn't improve your jiu-jitsu. It might improve your jiu-jitsu performance against other people who are doing that in a particular format. But in terms of your understanding of technique and 
leverage and timing and balance and connection and you know all, all the different concepts then it's not really enhancing those because you're trying to shortcut it you're trying to shortcut your ability enhance your ability that's what it is performance enhancing drugs you're enhancing your performance yeah so it's allowing you to to train longer doing incorrect technique and and training inefficiently because you have the drugs that allow you to recover from that and now the excess muscle that supports that and promotes it so you do more of it and you know as an old kind of broken guy now then i'm trying to reach out i guess to the people downstream for me you know and ask them to look at me and listen to me and the other people who are upstream from them to try and save, save them the pain and anguish that comes with a destroyed body you know like look after it yeah you, you have for the rest of your life you want to do jiu-jitsu forever and get really good and have a really good time you know and and to be able to do this amazing thing it's like someone says oh if you eat a lot of chocolate cake when you're younger you're never going to eat it when you're older diabetes right so jiu-jitsu i think is similar you, if you destroy yourself when you're young you're not going to get to enjoy it just as you're getting good just as your brain is starting to really understand it and you're like wow this is amazing and then your body is limited i'm limited my back's knackered other things and so there's some there's some movements for example that i teach you know and and without pressure like i can i can demonstrate them fine and pass them on to my students but if i have to execute it when i'm rolling then i literally can't my back will not let me so which is frustrating but then part of the journey is learning to accept my limitations and to be able to enjoy losing you know and and forget about the whole win lose thing and to just enjoy jiu-jitsu anyway so that's my little message um yeah like choose your path carefully don't close yourself off to to a multitude of options keep your options open examine all of them equally you know and and even when you choose one you don't have to like throw the others in the rubbish you know and and to definitely go and listen to these books because um if you do jiu-jitsu um or even if you don't like you know my wife does one self-defense class a week you know she enjoys that she started to to listen and, and enjoy this kind of thing i think that the, the messages from mentors that are then are that you can use and absorb and and take into the rest of your life regardless of what you do whether you do jiu-jitsu or not you probably do because you're on a jiu-jitsu channel anyway i better get going um I'm starting to get cold because I'm more sweaty and, and wet. Uh, catch you soon. Bye.